Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this five minute Sono video, we are going to go through the thoracic component of the FAST examination. Now, just as a review, the FAST exam stands for the Focus Assessment with Sonography in Trauma, and the views for the thoracic component are going to be the evaluation of a pericardial effusion, pneumothorax, and a pleural effusion. Let's start off with the pneumothorax and pleural effusion. Now, for these, if you want more specifics, more granular data, check out those specific videos in the website or the YouTube. When evaluating for a pneumothorax, we want to place the transducer on the most anterior part of the chest wall. If the patient is supine, it's going to be a little bit lower than we might think. Rib space is probably four through six or seven. And we're going to look for a couple of things. We're going to identify the ribs, which you see here and here. And we are going to look at the pleural line and we're looking for a sliding of that pleural line. Just a quick reminder, everything deep to this is artifact. This is the structure that we care about, this VPPI or the visceral parietal pleural interface. Now notice here that we're seeing sliding. This means that the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura are touching and you can see the visceral pleura, which is the lungs sliding relative to the parietal pleura. That is lung sliding on the ultrasound image. It looks like lateral motion of that white line. Let's compare that to the absence of lung sliding. Now this is the same patient. One side has a pneumothorax, one side does not have a pneumothorax. We can see here good lung sliding, whereas over here, we do not see good lung sliding. In the right clinical setting, this could be highly suspicious for a pneumothorax. Now you gotta keep in mind, there are other things that can cause the absence of lung sliding. So oftentimes what I do is I look for something called a lung point, which is where you see good lung sliding on part of the image and then not good lung sliding on the other part of the image. This is thought to be the limit or the border of the pneumothorax and thought to be highly specific for the diagnosis. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Now to get that view, you want to identify the area of the absence of lung sliding. Let's say it's here. And then right there, we're going to then move so that we're parallel or in between those intercostal spaces. We are going to bring the transducer in a transverse cut relative to the thoracic cavity. We are going to bring that down laterally, looking at the pleural line in between the ribs. So right here is pleural line, and we're going to try to identify that lung point as we go out laterally, because that's how it works. We have free air anteriorly, and then as we go laterally, as long as it's not a complete or a tension pneumothorax, we should be able to see a point more laterally where we identify that lung point. Now, quick caveat here, as you move out laterally, make sure that you change the tail of the transducer to make sure that the beam is always perpendicular to the thoracic cavity. If we keep the probe always up, you can see here, now we're looking at the rib cage in the oblique plane and we can't see very well. So you want to make sure to bring that transducer tail out laterally so that your beam is always perpendicular to the thoracic cavity so you can see that pleural line. There is definitely always limitations with any examination. This is a big one for the evaluation of a pneumothorax. Here we see the subcutaneous tissue, some muscle over here, probably rib, but we're seeing what looks like a pleural line above the rib and maybe a little pleural line down here. When we see air above that rib, that is highly suspicious for subcutaneous emphysema. And if you see that, the only thing you can say is that the patient has subcutaneous emphysema. You can't really comment on the pleura because you can't effectively see the pleura because the subcutaneous tissue is blocking the sound wave from getting to the pleura. Next, we're going to talk about a pleural effusion. Now, to evaluate for a pleural effusion, we're going to place a transducer in a similar location that we did for the FAST examination in the upper quadrants, but we're focusing in on a different area. We want to look in the place where we can see the diaphragm and we can see above and below the diaphragm. And the vertebral bodies here are a very important landmark. Now notice we see the vertebral bodies here and as the patient takes a breath in and the diaphragm moves this way, we see that this vertebral body right here, it disappears. 
what's happening is we have air in the thoracic cavity that's blocking the sound waves from getting down past an air-filled thorax. And so if we see this and we don't see the spine extend above the diaphragm, the patient is very unlikely to have a pleural effusion. Additionally, if we see a similar echo texture below the diaphragm as we see above the diaphragm, that's called a mirror sign. And that happens when you have air next to fluid, the liver, and that creates a reflective surface for what's on the other side. So if you see basically a liver on the other side of the diaphragm and you do not see the spine extend above that diaphragm, then that is a negative spine sign, positive mirror sign. We ruled out a pleural effusion. Over here is not those two things. We have the vertebral bodies going up, easily visible above the diaphragm. We see right here a hypoechoic fluid collection on the other side of the diaphragm. This is a negative mirror sign, positive spine sign, and this is indicative of a pleural effusion. Now, this is what a pleural effusion looks like. We don't really know the chronicity of it per se. And to be honest with this clip, it could be from infection. It could be from volume overload. We don't really know what caused it. And we have to know that this came with a trauma patient to be able to diagnose it as a hemothorax. That being said, if you have a trauma patient and you're able to see what's called a plankton sign, which in the middle there, in that pleural effusion, we are seeing a bunch of swirly stuff kind of looks like plankton, that is more likely to be an exudative effusion, which means more likely to be a hemothorax. Lastly, we're going to talk about a pericardial effusion. We look for that typically in the subcostal window, but truly we can look at it through any window we want. And we are going to look for a hypoechoic rim of fluid going around that effusion, which we are not seeing on the left side and we are seeing on the right side. Now this right here, this is a pericardial effusion for sure, but we don't always know if it is pericardial tamponade, but what we're looking for is we're looking for RV diastolic collapse. We can do that on any view, but this is the parasternal long axis view. When this mitral valve is open, we see the dip of that RV that is diastolic collapse of the right ventricle, which we are not seeing on this side. Left is pericardial tamponade, right is a pericardial effusion. And we can also sometimes see a big wiggly little thing right there. That is what a pericardial clot looks like. If you're not 100% sure what you're seeing, if that is what's causing that hemodynamic compromise, you can look at the IVC. On the left, we see an IVC that is flat and collapsing. That is a low CVP. On the right, we're seeing an IVC that is dilated and not collapsing at all. High CVP on the right, low CVP on the left. And the way that I use that is if I see the high CVP and I see the pericardial effusion, that's probably tamponade. And then if I don't, it's probably not tamponade. Now, this is a review of what we looked at. It was a very brief assessment for pericardial effusion, pneumothorax, and pleural effusion. My name is Jalen Avila. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.